Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. This is a painting that I have just completed and I explore a number of different techniques to create the final result that I was looking for. I hope you were all well during this difficult time. If you um, like this video please like and subscribe to my channel and if you uh, can spare a small amount of money for a donation that will help me to continue to be able to buy art materials to make these videos. Thank you to the very kind people who have, have donated to my videos in the last few months. It has made a huge difference. I first began this painting by doing some very intuitive sort of line making, mark making in small thumbnail sketches. I, I, to begin with, I wasn't even start thinking of doing a landscape. I was just drawing lines and angles, and then after I'd drawn a few lines on, on a few different little thumbnails, I actually decided that this sort of these angles and these lines were the most interesting, and I started to see a landscape, a beach landscape. So I wanted to do this in a more of an intuitive, intuitive way. I didn't want to. Uh, plan this by using photographs or, or being a particular place. So I wanted a strong and dynamic composition and this is how I started. I come up, came up with a number of different versions um, of this just using the same technique and I, I came up with all sorts of little sketches, lots of little landscapes and things that, that I may do in the future. So this is my preliminary work and I always do this before I do a painting. So you can see there's a few little sketches that I've done there. Now I'm using a cradled wood panel which has been painted with gesso a number of different times to, to make sure that I have a nice smooth um, surface to work on. So here I'm, I'm just looking at my little thumbnail sketch that I did and I'm transferring it onto the cradle panel just with using a pencil. So I'm just looking at you know the proportions. I actually drew the thumbnail the, the same proportion as as the, the cradle panel. So I was just looking at how far that is the sort of horizon was for the, from the top and where where did the rocks come in. Now you know from a a perspective point of view this perspective was not correct but you know, your perspective doesn't have to be exactly perfect if you can make it convincing and that, that's the challenge is to make a painting that's interesting and also convincing of, of a landscape. So I sketched it out with pencil and then I started to apply the textural effects that I wanted. So I'm just using um, gesso and I'm using a, a little paddle to um, to apply it and I'm moving moving around and creating different various planes so various planes of the different rocks so some flat parts at the top of the rock and some interesting textures by dabbing and um, flicking the, the gesso up and now this I'm applying it very thickly I also applied a little bit of a crackling medium as well on top and that created some big large crack, cracks um, on the surface of the rocks. Now I needed to create a, quite a thick layer because I knew that I was going to use some resin in the final stages and I needed this to be ra quite raised up so that it would create a wall for the resin. So here now I'm working on the rock pool. So this area at the front of the painting is a, a rock pool and I wanted to be able to see through the water and see some of the rocks and seaweed and, and little fish and just some things that are rising up to the surface um, in the foreground. So I was using gesso and I was using a gel, it was a, a gel medium and also some of the crackling crackling um, paste and I was just swirling it around with a paddle pop stick and you know with various different tools to create some textural effects so it was you know moving around with the you know the water swirling and this the sides of the 
the rocks underneath and maybe a little a hint of a coral and some seaweed. You know, and then I, you know, I kept working back into things to, to kind of draw, draw out the shapes of the rocks, and to create some some volume, even just with the raised edges of the of the gesso, creating a kind of a sense of um, the end of a rock and the beginning of another one. I spent quite a bit of time doing this, and I left some areas in the foreground. See, I'm flat, flattening the tops of the rocks here. I left some of the areas in the foreground without, without any of the texture on it. Um, so that's where I was probably going to put some fish. And here now I'm working on the texture of the headland. Now, I spent a lot of time working on the headland. Um, I actually ended up dividing the headland into like two headlands. And I created even more, more of a sense of, of, of distance in the end. Now here what I've done is I've put some golden gel, heavy gel medium into a syringe and I'm squeezing it all the way around the edge of the rocks and this is going to create a dam wall for when I use the resin. So I squeezed it all the way around the edge of it and I squeezed it and applied it all the way around the edge of the headland as well and on the horizon line so that the resin I was going to, intending to use the resin in the, the water and in the foreground rock pool. So I squeezed it quite very thick, quite thickly because I knew that I was going to do a number of layers of resin so it had to be quite a thick wall. I mean you can probably use other mediums to do this, it's just that's what I had and it works quite well because it's, it's transparent and in the end I touched it up with paint over the top so it became you know an invisible join between the rocks and the and the foreground. Now all these, these mediums take a long time to dry so I had to wait to do the next stages for quite, quite a few days. Um, it's dry now and I've used a mixture of gesso and some sand, I've got a very fine white sand that I use and I mix it up with a tiny bit of yellow ochre and various other colours I mixed in there to create a sandy colour. And now I'm just applying it with a like a sponge brush so that it, it goes on nice and thick. And you know, I'm changing the depth of the texture. Um, you know, further away that up near the horizon, the texture of the sand will be of course thinner because it's further away, and the texture that's closer to you in the rock pool area is thicker. So it's thicker and more textural. So texture is a way of creating perspective. So the texture that's closest to you is thicker and um, you know wider apart, and as it goes moves away into the distance, the, the texture actually disappears. You don't see the texture. You see how it sort of slowly disappears right up there, and it gets thinner and thinner right up to the horizon. So you can see the sort of recesses that I've created with the gel. And now, um, because I've got to wait for things to dry a lot, um, the, the gesso and sand area is dry, so I'm just using some acrylic paint. And I'm touching up the sand, creating some perspective. And the tone, the tone towards the horizon is, of course, lighter in tone. That's how you will create a sense of depth. So the area of the beginning, the, in the foreground of a painting will be darker, and as, as the the texture moves away from you, it the tone will get get lighter and lighter towards the horizon. So that's a way of creating perspective and depth. So here now I've just I just sprayed on a whole lot of water. It's just water. And I'm I'm thinning out some acrylic paints, various different brands of acrylic paint that I've used because I like the colours or I like the mixtures or I like the the um, 
textures. I'm splattering with the brush. Now I'm creating a fairly deep tone because I know that I'm going to do a splash of resin behind the rocks. So this tone behind the rocks has to be quite deep so that you'll see that splash. So this is a this is like a base layer for my colour. I mean I end up painting over the top of this but it's a base a base layer that I work into. And see it's moving into the sand and that's creating a, a sense of the edge of the water, you know, where you get a kind of a deeper tone where the water has hit the hit the sand. And here I'm just flicking some pure alcohol and creating some some little bit a little bit of effects in the water. And I'm using a, a brush to do it. It actually did bleed into the crackling a little bit, um, but it didn't matter because I knew I was going to go over the top of it. So I just kept adding more and more tone because I really needed to be strong behind the rock for when I applied the resin wave there. So I was adding adding some purples and some yellows and yellow ochres. Um, you know, I added added a bit of yellow because yellow and purple are complementary and they create greys. So I wanted to create some greys as well. I didn't want this to be, you know, chocolate box um, looking, you know, too blue, way, way too blue. I wanted this to look, you know, real. I don't want it to um, look too artificial. Um, I mean, really, when you look at the ocean, sometimes it's super blue, but it's usually got this sort of a desaturated look about it. And the more the more of that desaturation that I did here in the in the foreground, that created a great sense of depth too. So it's quite it deepens the tone in the in the foreground. And so I've got more sort of browny colours, and I'm just allowing it to mix in to each other. And I will be playing that up with paints over the top by hand. So I'm using the alcohol to create some interesting little textures that I will use in the coral later. So you can see that the the paint, because it's so watery, it's, it's really pushing down into the textures and filling up the textures, filling up the, the valleys and and the, the mountains in the texture. Um, but I will be working back into that by wiping back you know, when it starts to dry a bit. So when it's it's just starting to dry a bit then I go back with a, a damp rag and then I rub over the top of the texture and then you start to see the texture come back so I rub off the the paint that's sitting on the surface of the texture and it leaves the paint that's in the valleys of the texture see how I'm rubbing back and the, the tones stay in the valleys but I'm just picking up the highlights by wiping back. It's just a damp cloth and I'm just using acrylic paints. Uh, they're just thin down. So this is like my base layer. So it looks you know pretty messy at this stage but it's it gives me an indication of tone, colour and texture. This is the very first stages of creating a uh, painting. You know, I'm thinking about where the light would come from. You know, I mean, it's quite, um, it's quite a, a sunny sort of day, so the light's coming from directly from above. And here now, I'm now when all that was dry, I've started to work with a small brush and pick up some some textures that are already there and just play the, playing them up a bit, so creating some. You know, seaweed shapes, some unusual sort of rock formations, and maybe kind of an indication of coral. And I'm doing it in between the textures, so in between those raised areas that I put on with gesso and the crackling, I'm sort of going into the valleys and deepening the tones and picking out some rock shapes, so kind of outlining some shapes 
in the in the rocks in the in the underwater scene there. I spend a great deal of time doing the handwork. It, there's a lot of handwork done on this. I've got a sort of a linear, a linear patterning happening in the the coral and the rocks in the foreground, and this this helps to give a sense of movement. So because the water is is flowing over the top of it, so it helps to create a sense of movement. And it's a visual interest in the painting. See how I'm picking out the rocks. I'm picking up shadows. So I'm saying, okay, that's the underneath the rocks so I'll deepen the tone there and you know the highlight I'll rub back even more later on with a rag. Now here I'm starting to work on the sand you know I'm starting to pull things together I'm starting to work on the sand and on the on the water so I'm I'm flattening out the tone of the water just fairly thin I'm not doing a really thick layer of paint it's quite thin it looks thick but it isn't it's quite thin layers almost like glazing with acrylics in a way. It's sort of thin. I, I built up layers very slowly. You know, always thinking about the, the depth. You know, I'm trying to create a sense of, of depth the foreground moving up to the, the horizon. So here, because these rocks are quite, um, will be quite dark because they're, they're kind of almost submerged in the water there at the, on the edges, so they'll be dark. And even under them will be quite dark as well. So I deepen that, really deepen the tones even more than I think because I know that I need it to be dark for the resin work that I do in the end. I started to work on the headland. I put some little fish, just a little indication of fish in the foreground. And I decided to add more texture, so I'm hearing I'm adding a bit more gesso. So, you know, you can add colour to gesso too. You can add some acrylic paints to get a bit of colour going. But I just did a lot of a lot of textural effects and I actually waited for it to dry before I did went a lot further. And I'm just using a um, spatula, just scraping back into the texture they made. And you know, even making sort of grassy textures, just with little blobs along the edge. And I, I worked on the headland a bit too. I put more um, gesso on the headland and just scraped it back a bit and moved the, the spatula around to create uh, the illusion of rocks. I mean, because this is what you're trying to do when you're creating a landscape. You're trying to create an illusion of depth and reality. So see that there's, I've, I've made two headlands, like a rocky reggae, rocky headland and then one further out in the distance. And so I'm, that needed to be lighter in tone because it's further away. So whatever is furthest away means it needs to be the lightest in tone. But I wanted it to, to relate to each other, so I, I really agonised over the colouring here. In the end, I realised it needed to be more blue, it needed to be cooler in tone and not so warm. So I, in the end, added more blue and that helped the headland to recede into the background and I added more blues and purples in the, on the rocky headland part as well. You know, I was sort of going backwards and forwards, working on one part and then another. I, I mean, I didn't just finish one part and then start another. I was working on the whole thing, constantly going backwards and forwards from the foreground to the background to the sky to the water, um, you know, constantly assessing whether I needed to work on things a bit more. I would stand way out in the hallway to look at it from a distance. Uh, you can start to work a bit too, especially because I'm doing so much detail. You can start to work too close to a piece, get too wrapped up in it. Okay, so now I'm I'm at the 
stage of doing the resin. I, I was happy with what I'd done. I'm using some Lures Angel White, some uh, art resin, and I'm going to use a, a credit card to move it on. I've got all my safety equipment on, and I've put some black tape all around the edges of the board. As you can see, I finished it all. It was a lot of work on there, a lot of detail. And you make sure that your work is level. If it's not level, you're going to have all sorts of problems. So now I've just put on a thin layer of resin, just moving it around over the top of the water. And I'm just swirling it up as thinly as I can, really, to start with. Right up to the edge of, of the beach. And as you can see, it's not going, it's not moving any further onto the rocks because I've got that lovely little wall that I created with that gel. So it's all staying where I want it to stay. And now I'm just dragging some of the angel white into the clear resin. I actually realized at this point that I actually hadn't put enough angel white in. It wasn't white enough actually. That's why I ended up having to do another layer over that. And now I'm using the heat gun and I'm pushing the white into the clear resin right up onto the beach. So I didn't put the resin all the way to the beach because I knew I was going to blow it up further. So I'm just doing another row of waves and swell. So I was changing the angle of the heat gun to create different a different sort of effects with, with the resin. I got a little bit of lacing but not a lot because I, I didn't really have enough pigment in the resin. You can put quite a lot of that angel white into your resin and it's still it still works really well. Um, it's very stable pigment. And here now I'm putting a layer of just clear resin over the top of everything. Um, there's quite a, a deep recess between the coral and the rock. You see now I'm putting some of the, the angel white, which is a lot stronger this time than I made it around the edge of the rock and I'm just blow, blowing it away from the rock and changing the angle and you know I've got a few little areas where I've got some nice sort of webbing which really look very nice. Now here, here I was using some white spray paint so it's straight from like spray paint that I got from Bunnings and I'm just take dip dripping it into directly into the resin. There's no resin mixed with it, it's just straight from the can and I put it in a small container and I'm just dropping it on and it got some it gives some really interesting um, shapes and effects. I thought I might get a nice little foamy area around the edge of the rocks and and I know I've used it before to create jellyfish creates marvellous jellyfish. <laughs> so I just kept putting little bits of the spray paint into a few different areas around the edges of the rocks and making some little jellyfish shapes and I dispersed it sometimes and sometimes I left those shapes as they were. It actually is quite cool here, so the resin didn't move too much. I, I find it easier to work with resin in the in between seasons, like when it's not too hot and when it's not too cold. So it doesn't move too much. When it's hot, it just moves just like crazy. So I was trying to get that sort of sense of the foam, you know, where the water is splashed up and it's it's all being churned up by the waves. You know, I pulled I pulled stuff out too. Like I pulled some of the 
the white out. I was using just a paper towel and just wiped out where I didn't like it. So I pulled it out, pulled the white out and reduced the amount of resin that was there so that it wouldn't um, move so much. And I, start, I was starting to get some nice little sort of wave-like shapes, like a little wave turning over along the edge there and the water swirling around the edge of the rocks and then off into the distance. So the, the little walls that I created worked really well, which was great. And see that, that texture there, that's actually sitting above the resin. Um, there was a bit of resin in the textured areas, but it was sitting right up high, which was great because that's what I wanted to give that illusion of that the rocks were rising up to the surface of the water. And so that was all, all dry and this is another day and I'm just pouring on some resin. This is for the wave that's crashing up against the rock. So I put a pool of resin, not a lot of resin, and then I just heated it. And then I've made this a very, very strong mixture of the angel white with resin. And it's, there's a lot of pigment in there. But I know that that's going to mix into the clear resin, so it's, um, it's going to be fine. But it needs to be quite strong white. So I've got quite a bit of pigment there. And now this is, of course, where you either it makes or breaks it. <laughs> it's quite nerve-wracking doing this because, you know, so much work, it just doesn't work, you know, then I have to wipe it all off. Now, I quite liked the shape, but I didn't want to have, like, an absolute direct, you know, a white edge. I wanted it to be flicking up and the water splattering up into the sky. So I wiped back. And then I went back with clear resin, thin, quite thin layer of clear resin so it wouldn't move too much. And I put the thin resin up to it and I moved that thin layer of resin out to the edges, edge of the water on the, the beach. See, I'm sort of pushing it around, not making it too thick. If it's too thick, I know that 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 white pigment will keep moving out and I just, I really loved how it was right at that moment and I was concerned that it was going to move more but it didn't because I had used quite a thin layer around it. So the, the amount of resin that's, that I put the white into is quite thick but the area around is thin so it seemed to hold it in position which was great because uh, I was worried about that. And then I was going to do some more along the edge of the beach because it, it really had completely, you know, dissolved into the into the colours there. It really couldn't even see that, that little wave at all. So I went back and did a little bit more there. So I was quite pleased with that. You could, you can actually, I didn't realise how much I could manipulate the actual resin just by using a cloth. And then I needed to put some foam and waves going over the top of the coral reef to create that sense of, uh, of transparency of looking through into the rock pool. So I did a couple of lines of the white and I didn't want it to be an exact line because you know that doesn't look real so I wiped out and I flicked it up so there it looked like there's a sort of a churning a churning of the water and a churning of the foam over the top of those rocks and the coral there which is what would happen because the water would be splashing in and out of those those different levels of rocks that are under the water and would create like a churning effect. When the resin was cured then I did a little bit of handwork. As you can see I did a few more little um, jelly blubber shapes and I enhanced some of the highlights with just some um, quite thick structure white paint and I just picked up 
and neatened up some areas around where the resin resin walls I'd created were. And just went back over the whole painting and made sure that the the contrast was good across the whole work. And as you can see, you know, the texture is was, you know, is really quite a feature of this painting. And I was pretty pretty happy with it in the end. The inspiration for this painting came from my love of the beach. Curve of the Beach, which is the title of this painting, is an expansive imagined view. There are no sunbathers or walkers to be seen. It is serene except for the crashing of the waves against the rocks and the swirling water in the rock pool. During this very unsettling time of the coronavirus, I was struck by the isolation we were all experiencing. When we were finally allowed to go to the beach, I felt I could breathe out at last. While walking, I realised that even when we humans are not here, nature carries on regardless. We now know how fragile and vulnerable we humans are. I hope you are all well and have enjoyed this video. If you would like to like and subscribe to my channel, if you would like to make a small donation, it's greatly appreciated. I have a Facebook um, page that you can follow for more details of my paintings. Um, please um, keep your eyes open for new videos. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.